Gustazo. I know you Donald Trump fans have high hopes, but get real. He's a long shot. The smart money, the people who bet, say Hillary is pretty certain to be America's next president. So tonight we devote our entire show to Hillary. What worries me most about her is that I fear her ideas are going to strangle our future. She thinks she knows what's best for everyone. She'll micromanage our lives, spend our money. She thinks she'll do that better than you will and drive us further down the road to bankruptcy. We already spend and promise to spend much more money than we have, and yet Hillary wants to spend more. It's worth it, she says, because her spending will create jobs. Jobs and infrastructure, our roads, our bridges, our tunnels, our ports, our rail systems, our water systems. The audience applauds, but don't, says Dan Mitchell at the Cato Institute. Here to debate him is Democrat and Fox News co-host Juan Williams. So, Juan, you like Hillary? Going to vote for her? I probably will vote for her if she's running against Trump. Uh, but the question that you asked to me is quite important, and I'm so glad that you're doing this, because I think for many people, the idea that you would invest more in stimulus spending comes across almost as profane. Yes. And in, I'm here to say to you, John, if you had spent more, you might have gotten more bang for your buck. It generates higher levels of consumer spending, which generates more economic activity to the benefit of us all. Dan, take it away. We should just, we should spend gazillions of dollars. Somehow you just throw a dollar into this magic uh, bucket, uh, swish it around a little bit, and, and, and magic unicorns will give us everything that we want. And, oh, wait and a second. what's it really makes, funny... It makes sense. People will have more money, they'll spend more money, more here's economic the activity. Government can't give us a dollar or spend a dollar without first taking it out of the productive sector of the economy. And what's really amazing, every time Keynesian economics is tried, failed. The excuse always is, oh, if only we had spent more, it would have worked. Well, no, you spend more, you wind up being Greece. Hillary wants to spend $350 billion for reduced college tuition, $200 billion for free child care, $75 billion for clean energy, a trillion dollars in new spending. Juan, we're going broke. We can afford this? We're going broke. We can't afford to pay Social Security, Medicare, the promises we've made already. That's not true. We're paying it. Social Security is viable for many years out. I would agree with you that there seems to be a cutoff point where the reserve would be expended. So we're, that's a real issue in terms of entitlement spending and how we can cut back or adjust it. We have more than $100 trillion, perhaps as much as $200 trillion of unfunded liabilities for our various entitlement well, programs. Juan says there's this fund that hasn't run out yet. Well, it hasn't run out yet, but imagine if this was a show in Greece in 2003. I bet there were some people on the left in Greece who said, hey, we're in good shape. Sooner or later, if something can't go on forever, it does stop. Because I, like Dan, can't see what people like about big spending, Hillary, I sent my producer to ask people at a Clinton rally. What do you like about her? She's very well qualified, and she has experience in getting things done. Hillary has a way of getting things done. What does she get done, Juan? I mean, we look for her achievements as a senator. We found three bills she began. A bill to name a post office after Major, Major George Cuomo. A bill to name a highway after Tim Russert. A bill to establish the American Labor Studies Center as a national historic site. That was it. I think that you are mocking Hillary Clinton, but doing so effectively. If all Hillary Clinton ever did was have bills to rename post offices, that would be great. I wish all politicians only did stuff like that. But I mean, the fact is she was reelected in this state for and people felt that she represented them well. But if you go on to the larger issue of what did she accomplish as Secretary of State, then I think we are in a very interesting mix in terms of what ending two wars. What two wars did she end? Well, I think she ended or helped to end the war in Iraq and the war in Afghanistan. Well, I thought those were still going on. At the Clinton rally, there were a bunch of kids chanting, Hillary! 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 It's so cute to see them. Because oh, I think real loyalty starts when you're about that age. It's unattractive to me. It's unattractive even when you see young people out there screaming profanities at Trump because he demonizes uh, Mexicans and Latinos. I don't appreciate it. I think it's wrong. One big Democratic theme this year has been the conceit that a few government subsidies will stop 
climate change. We are going to combat climate change by creating clean, renewable energy jobs by the millions. I believe that we can have installed a half a billion more solar panels by the end of my first term and enough clean energy to power every home in America by the end of my second term. Take money from people and subsidize people like me who can afford a house with solar panels on it. This is a good thing and it's going to have any effect on climate change? I think it has a tremendous... What do you mean? If, if people are burning fewer carbon-based fuels and relying more on the sun, the wind, in other words, environmentally friendly sources of energy, I think that helps us all if you are concerned about climate change. Maybe you're not. Well, I'm concerned if it's climate is changing. I just am not sure we did it, and right. I'm certain that these things aren't going to make any difference. This is just a recipe for more cylindra-type scandals and slush money corporate donors and things like that. Uh, I don't want the government trying to micromanage the economy and using green energy as an excuse. But if there's an environmental problem, that's a role for government. If it's happening and it's caused by man, what is the most intelligent way to mitigate it and deal with it? And I don't think having government industrial policy is going to be the smart approach. To my great relief, our likely next president sometimes says things that suggest she might understand what actually creates prosperity. Create the economic conditions. Obviously, most jobs are started and grown by private business, but it matters what kind of atmosphere there is. Create the economic conditions. She gets it. Well, I think that's right. If, if government is providing core public goods like rule of law, property rights, enforcing contracts, if that's what Hillary means by it, I'm with her. Unfortunately, I suspect that she has a much more expansive definition. Maybe she means it. And Juan, your new book about American leaders gives me hope. You call libertarian economist Milton Friedman the founding father of the American economy as we know it today. And I assume you mean that as a compliment? In part, yes. I think that it has contributed to this issue of income inequality that is so dynamic in this election season, from the Bernie Sanders side to the uh, Donald Trump side of the political spectrum. Government does play a role in terms of... Getting out of the way? Well, if you can say that, I think that's what you would say. I would say making sure that it's a level playing field. You talked about enforcing contracts, making sure that everyone has an equal opportunity. That's also a function of government in an era when it looks like we, the big boys are running away with the game. On social media, I ask people, what are good things about Hillary Clinton? On Facebook, Jim Von Maitre wrote, she's withstood decades of right-wing attacks and hasn't crumbled. She's been dedicated to public service her entire adult life. Public service, Dan? I guess it means making lots of money, giving speeches to Goldman Sachs. Uh, I, I'm not quite sure what it means, other than her friends have made out like bandits. I say real public service is making people's lives better. Steve Jobs did a public service by creating personal computers and my iPhone. Henry Ford did a public service by making cars affordable to poor people. Most of you do public service when you work because you provide people a service or product. Politicians, they do the least public service. They take money from us and pander for votes by then giving it back. Juan, am I wrong? I, I'm, I'm all for innovation and private sector growth, but I do believe that capitalism needs some governing so that you don't have us uh, exploiting children well, we and having some, but people... Some, 40% of the economy... Live, do you want to live in Brazil and, and have to get to your home on a helicopter on a mountaintop? I don't no, think so, John. I, I think there's a legitimate function for government to moderate excess in a capitalist society. Limited government like Hong Kong or even Australia. New oh, Zealand. Hong Kong. Oh, you should go check their welfare rates. Far higher than ours. In Hong Kong, I was just there in February, only 3% of the population is receiving government assistance. Finally, at that Clinton rally, I was surprised how many people said they like Hillary because she's a woman. What is it that you like about Hillary for president? Well, I think Hillary would bring a lot of change for women. I really like to see a woman uh, in the office. It's time that we had our chance. I believe it's time we had a woman in the White House. It seems sort of anti-feminist, this. Shouldn't people vote for you because you're the best, not because of your gender? If we were talking about Margaret Thatcher, 
I'd be cheering. It's, it's the policies that the politician believes in that should guide our votes, not simply whether they have a certain set of genitalia. The idea that this democratic, developed, developed nation has never had a woman as leader. Other countries have. Great Britain, Germany at the moment, Israel. But, I but, think but, that but, says, you know what, there's a reason to celebrate. That's a good thing. But, but why didn't your left-wing friends celebrate Margaret Thatcher? You only celebrate oh, when left-wing women get elected. That's not true. Would you have celebrated Sarah Palin being elected? No, I would not. I, don't, I disagree so strongly with so many of the policies. Hillary Clinton, I know you don't agree, John, but the Hillary Clinton, for whatever you say, has been a U.S. senator, twice elected, secretary of state, and now running for president. It's not as if she has not gone through not only Republican criticism, but the real test of leadership in our country. Thank you, Juan. Dan, 